Suppose you want to create a list of squares of number ranging from 1 to 20. The first approach comes to our mind is to create a list, then iterate over all the numbers in that range and finally append the value to our list. For this we have written three lines of code. But Python has something called list comprehension which helps us to make our code more compact. So in order to use list comprehension, we open a square bracket, then we write our expression we want to evaluate and finally we write our for loop to iterate over the given range. This single line of code is capable of doing the same thing we just saw a minute before. While using the list comprehension, we can also write some specific condition that if the condition is true then only it will store the value else it will skip that value. In this video our topic of discussion will be list comprehension generators and generator expression so stay with me till the end. First we will look at a simple example of list comprehension which is to create a list of values in specific range. Suppose we want to create a list of even numbers in the range 0 to 20 then we can do it in this way using list comprehension. Since this range function takes step size as third argument, it is easy to filter out the even numbers by taking the step jump of 2. But if we want to filter the value by some condition, then we can use if statement inside our list comprehension like this. For one more example, Suppose we have a list of some random names and we want to create another list which will contain the name whose length is greater than 5. For that we will use name variable to iterate over each name in the list then set a condition that length of the name must be greater than 5. Now we will discuss about generators. To explain the concept of generator, I will create a list containing value from 0 to 5. Then we will iterate over the values in the list and print it. Now we will do the same thing using our range function. Then what is the difference between a range object and the list object? Actually, when we define a list, then it get a physical existence in the memory. But our range function acts as a generator object and it yields the value in response to the next operation carried out in the iteration process. So our range function has only logical existence in the memory, not the physical existence. So to verify what I said, I will check the size of our list and the range both. We will use getSizeOf method from our sys module. This method takes an object as input and return the size of that object in bytes. Size of our list is 104. Now let's check the size of our range 1 to 6. It is 48. Now let's increase our range to see the big difference. As we increase the value of list, the size gets bigger and bigger. But no matter how much you increase the range, it will always give you a fixed size. This is because the values between these ranges doesn't really exist into our memory. Now I will show you how we can create our own generator object like range function. If you pass any float value inside range function, then you will get an error. So we will create our own iteration pattern using generator function. Let's name this function float range. It will take starting value, stopping value and the step size as input. Then we will set our start value to variable x. Then we will loop through the following code until we do not reach the stopping value. During each iteration we will yield value instead of returning it. And then increment the value of x by the step size. Notice that only this yield keyword is responsible for making this normal function into a generator function. If we call this float range function with some input, then it will show you that it is a generator object. If we want to use it, we have to iterate through it like this. Now let's compare the size when we convert it to a list. Now check the size of range without converting it into a list. 
Let's increase the size for both list and generator function. Outstanding. Unlike a normal function, a generator only runs in response to iteration. Here is another experiment to see the underlying mechanics of how such function works. This time we will define a countdown function which will take single integer as input. Inside this function, first we will print the number we are starting the countdown from. Then yield the value of n until the n is greater than 0. And then we will print a message done outside the loop. Now we will call this function with value 3 and store it in a variable. Note that when you try to print it, it will show you that it is a generator object. To run the first yield, we have to use next function. We are manually consuming all the values from this generator function. If you call it again, you will get the next decremented value. Notice that this was the last iteration of our while loop. Now if we call the next function, then it will execute the print statement along with the stop iteration exception. Few minutes back, we discussed about list comprehension and one potential downside of using a list comprehension is that it might produce a large result if the original input is large itself. For example, we will create a list of squaring all the numbers in the range of 1 to 50. Now check the size of this list. If size of the list is your concern, then you can use generator expression to produce the filtered value iteratively. We can create a generator expression in same way as list comprehension, but with parenthesis instead of using square brackets. Now if you try to print this, it will show you that it is a generator expression. Let's check the size of our generator expression. It is way less than the size of our list. But if you want to grab the values from it, you have to iterate over it like this. So after these examples which we saw in this video, I hope that you got some idea how a generator function works and what is the advantage of using it. So as an exercise, you can create a prime number generator function which will generate the primes in the given range in response to the iteration call instead of storing it into memory. You can post your GitHub code link in comment section below. In the next video, we will discuss about objects and classes. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then do subscribe it and hit the bell icon. And if my videos are upgrading your knowledge, then don't forget to like it.